Hello, my name is Rory O'Connor and I lead the Suicide Behaviour Research Laboratory at the University of Glasgow. And uh, this is my daughter Poppy. Hi. Meet Poppy. And um, Poppy attended her first Darkness Into the Light walk this year. I was really inspired by it and, um, and obviously she's uh, learned, heard a lot about suicide and prevention living in a house with me. Um, and is keen maybe to ask some questions about World Suicide Prevention Day, which is uh, the 10th of September. Uh, and so, Bobby, over to you. Hello, Dad. Uh, why is suicide prevention, well, World Suicide Prevention Day, so important to you? Well, it's not just so important to me, it's important to loads of people because basically what we're trying to do is raise awareness with regard to suicide and prevention. No, and it's not like just real. Well, it's not just real. One, well, it is real, but it's, it's not just one day of the year. In the sense that suicide prevention activities should be going on all year round, and yeah. they do go on all year round. I suppose what's important about World Suicide Prevention Day is on the 10th of September each year, there's a, a focus across the globe on suicide prevention activities. So, for example, this year, the World Suicide Prevention Day banner has been translated into 69 languages. Uh, the Light the Candle sort of activities have been translated into 50 languages. There's 150 activities going on across the globe. And there's a cycle across the globe, a, a sort of a big fundraising event that um, YASP, the International Association for Suicide Prevention, is running. And that's, we've now clocked up something like over 100,000 kilometres of pledges. So that's like I think, two and a half times across the globe. So it's just really important just to get a focus on suicide prevention. Because although it's a really important public health concern or mm -hmm. priority, it really it still doesn't get the focus in, uh, that it requires. So for one example, if we look at people who are affected by cancer and look at mm. the amount of funding for cancer research and you compare that to the equivalent funding for uh, suicide prevention. Good. Cancer gets 22 times more funding than suicide prevention. So now, of course, it's really important to invest in cancer research, yeah. but we shouldn't neglect suicide prevention. Well, um, <clears throat> the thing is, I feel like, well, one, that people seem to see cancer as more of an illness because it's more easily diagnosed. Well, I think that's a tricky. It's, a it's tricky. like sort of like uh, mental health. It, you can't really look at someone and see it. Mm -hmm. With cancer, you could look at someone and kind of see it. Yeah, I think but, I, yeah, I think it's a fair point because but, of the, the whole issue though is it's um, yes. Yeah, so so but, with mental health, often people who are suicidal, yes, yeah, you can't observe that they're necessarily suicidal. And there's no one typical person yeah, who, but, who, who's suicidal. So it affects and can affect anybody. And indeed. 804,000 people die by suicide each year and um, 25 times that number at least will have attempted suicide. But also I feel like nowadays because it's sort of the media kind of and well anything really portrays it in such a light way and they portray it in the way and like it's like the people who are just um as a lot of them you already feel like they're a burden mm -hmm. so having these shows which portray them as a burden, it's kind of adding to, well, that theory. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point, and I think the issue that you're highlighting there is the fact that... The normalised terms. Well, no, I think it's stigma. It's linked, it's linked to stigma, which I'll mm. see, um, and that, that there are lots of myths around suicide, and, and I think mm. it's really crucial that we continue to tackle those myths. Now, yeah. there's been lo lots of advances in the last few years in terms of understanding it's and tackling... Good. Well, no, I think the advances mostly have been good because... It's, uh, mental health and suicide has become much less stigmatised. We've still huge um, strides to go forward, but there has been great, great steps in terms of anti-stigma campaigns. For example, in Scotland, we've had an anti-stigma campaign for at least more than a decade, decade plus, and that really has, we think, improved people's attitudes towards mental health and mental illness. Um, but what we need to do, though, is we need to do more of that. Okay, so next question. Um, what things did you do last year that you think were especially important that you aren't actually going to do like, that are different from last year? Okay, so that's a good question. So and within our research lab, um, we always have lots of different studies going on. Um, some of the studies are looking at sort of the psychological mechanisms or psychological factors associated with suicide. And others we try and intervene to reduce risk. And so we published during the year, we published um, a trial about a brief intervention, a help sheet, which we think may be helpful some people in reducing the likelihood that they'll self-harm again in the future. So basically what we're hoping to do is work with clinical colleagues in the next 12 months to try yeah. and see can we look at using that in a clinical practice. And then in addition to that we've secured funding 
from MQ Research, one of the, well, the only uh, mental health research charity. And they, we've got money from them, and we've just started a study looking at trying to keep people safe yeah. um, who are suicidal. And what we're looking to do, we're working with our, our American colleagues trying to tailor an intervention so that there's this very brief intervention getting people to think about warning signs or triggers yeah. and keeping themselves safe so, that, so that the next time they become suicidal they don't act on their thoughts. But I also believe that they should probably make it easier to talk to people in school because yes we have guidance teachers but these guidance teachers they should be more, well they should know how to deal with the things that are like 50 years ago it would have been probably literally much longer but like 50 years ago they would have had to deal with what well, like physical violence but like Nowadays, there's so many other things like some people, like mental, mental stuff. So, mental health stuff. A teacher, if someone was to go up to a teacher and say like, um, like I don't want to live anymore, the teacher probably wouldn't know how to deal with it properly. Well, I think yeah, I think you're making a very good point. That's a obviously a, a protector population yeah. of people at school and young people, and it's really important we we look at young people because we know that self harm is an issue for young people, and I think and I think there's been again good progress in terms of having counselling mm. support and. Um, pastoral care in schools but I agree entirely mm -hmm. we need to do more so that there's two things one is that the, that the barriers so that so uh, for like somebody make actually make it easier for people to actually reach out and seek help and secondly and, and we to need hope to they aren't going to be shamed yeah absolutely and we need to we need to um, train and educate teachers and staff and all those because it's fear people are often very frightened oh, it's a very yeah, frightening thing that if somebody like, says oh I'm, I want to kill myself it's really really frightening but also like for <clears> example if it's like that thing where it's like you can't tell because you're a snitch that's what, it's not, of course it's quite different, but it's the same kind of comparison that if you tell you're going to be teased. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, well that's, not normal. that's something we need to work well, on, certainly. Well, it's not, it obviously isn't, like, that's a wrong term, not normal, but it is what people, yeah. young people believe, because yeah. young people are quite close to being good sometimes. Yeah, I agree, and um, so moving on then, so the other thing we've done um, uh, last year, which is the third, well, third year will be in 2018, is that we now run this early career researchers forum yeah. for people who do work into suicide and self-harm and that's a huge yeah. success so people know well no it's people who are like, working in the area and, right. it's, and it's giving them support and networks and so, they, so basically it's so like from people across Europe who people come people that want to grow yeah but it's people mm -hmm. it's people who are currently working in the area and then so, so like, they're meeting other people who are working in the area and we're trying to help them sort of support them and that's like been a great new in initiative to uh, sort of a couple like of our a colleagues yeah it's a network it's, so uh, if one so that if you can all kind of know. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you've got difficulties or you've learned some stuff, you can sort of work with each other because there are people at different stages in yeah. their career. Because it's really, really important that we support people who are working in this area because it's difficult to work in the area. And it's obviously, um, you're encountering emotional stuff a lot and it's really mm -hmm. providing this sort of broader framework for people. So th that's really exciting for us. What else have you got on your list there? Well, um, I was wondering, what are you um, hoping to be able to accomplish this year? And what are you hoping to do that you didn't end up doing last year? Well, we're always keen to engage beyond sort of academia and to reach out beyond sort of ivory towers of universities. So like not to people that maybe aren't as advantaged? Oh, well, no, but different things. Yes, yeah, so we definitely are looking to reach out to, to people from a whole range of backgrounds. But I suppose what I'm meaning is... That like people that aren't going to come to you? Yeah, yeah. So people who wouldn't normally hear about our research exactly. and what we're doing. So, so like people are a bit maybe confused. They don't understand why they're having these thoughts because they aren't as educated about it in school. Well, maybe that could be one group of people, certainly. But what, I suppose what I'm talking about really when I think about it. when I'm talking about um, sort of this wider we describe as public engagement, it's really trying to get people who are um, maybe not necessarily involved in, in research, but or, but we all have a sort of stake in preventing suicide. So it's <coughs> everybody from so the broader general public, but it also will obviously include people who've been suicidal themselves, and um, and is really just trying to learn from each other because suicide prevention, not one of us. So me as a psychologist or as an academic, I don't have all the answers, and it's really crucial well, no, that we involve people. No, it's crucial that we involve people with lived experience, and um, with direct experience, both those people who've been suicidal themselves, as well as their family members, maybe who sadly lost ones to um, family mm -hmm. members to suicide. Okay, have you any, anything else there? Is that is that the end of your questions. That's the end of the questions. Okay, so I have one question for you then, Bobby. Okay. So you've been thinking about um, what you would do for suicide prevention. So what do you think is important, what can be done for suicide prevention? Well, I think that we should talk about it more in school. Like, in my school, we have uh, PSC lessons, which are meant to talk about problems, but they don't really, like, we don't really touch on enough. Like, well, that's partly because it's tricky. So I, it's a really important we need to do more in school. Well, but then, we have to be careful what we do talk about how we talk about suicide. Well, then they in should be educated to be able to talk about it, so it's not tricky. Well, no, it's just 
Yeah, I agree. Should be, everybody should be educated more, but mm. it's more about understanding. It's talking about mental health and well-being. We should be doing more about that, certainly, yeah. and equipping our young people, equipping your friends and you with how you, that it's actually okay to fail and that it's okay to ask for help and that actually asking for help like is a sign of strength. Not at all, cowardly. It's absolutely really, really vitally important. So I think you're right. I think we need to focus uh -huh. on young people, absolutely, but and in schools. I also think that, um, as you have told me a lot of time, that the... Um, the men, as they're in not in general, more likely to more kill themselves, yeah. themselves, but it's also because they find it harder to talk about their feelings because they have been told that that's not manly and they've kind of been taught to suppress their emotions. And I think that um, forcing, enforcing gender roles on children that are of a young age is going to affect them in the long run. And it's almost like if you were to tell someone that they can't walk because they, they slow at it or something. Yeah, well, I think, I think you're right. It's, it's a, the, we have to be careful how gender roles are mm -hmm. enacted or supported, and that obviously the whole manning up idea. That's I mean, and it's ladylike. Being ladylike. I mean, it's just. I mean, the, we we should we sh it should be gender neutral, and the whole thing mm -hmm. should be like in terms of obviously what it is to be a man is a complicated thing, and that what we need to do is look at how society is is maybe conspiring and making men contributing to men feeling more at risk and uh -huh. women being at risk as well of like, course so i agree entirely we need to, we need like to deal with that, that if um, a man were to talk about his feelings he'd be seen as weak yep. which is ridiculous and wrong and wrong and that's wrong. it's great to see all these role models and celebrities mm -hmm. and others coming out and actually talking about their emotions they are not going to talk about emotions then it's sort of like if you were to like it's like telling someone that you're there for them but then when they try to talk to you being shut down yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point, I think, to end. So um, we'll just finish this now in a, a 10 minutes or so. So just to end with, obviously, um, encourage everybody to get involved in World Suicide Prevention Day um, on tomorrow, the 10th of September. And also think about, obviously, suicide prevention is a year. Every single day is about suicide prevention. And um, and so that in, in the UK... The UK suicide rate decreased um, last year, albeit that the suicide rate in England, uh, in Scotland, actually for the first time in a number of years, increased. So it's, there are really different patterns of suicide across the, the UK and across the globe more generally. So we can't be complacent, and we all need to work together yeah. with me and my daughter, and yeah. every, all of us have a role in suicide prevention. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> I didn't know.